guys. Hey, today I want to go over with you how to make a jelly cheesecake pie. So basically, um, this is going to be for Independence Day. We celebrate our Independence Day in the town that I live in on July 3rd, and that way on July 4th, we can go to the surrounding areas. So I'm just going to make this a day ahead of time, and I just want to go go over it with you so that way you guys can see how easy it is. Okay, so what you'll need is a food processor is how I'm going to grind up my cookies and obviously I have cookies here. These are just a little package of sandwich cookies. I just get them at the Dollar General. They're literally one dollar. Um, these are great. They have chocolate, vanilla, they have lemon ones um, and then in the dollar aisle at our store that we have here, a grocery store, they have even strawberry ones. I should have grabbed some of those but I already had these in the cupboard. So one package of these, there's typically 30 in a package. I'm going to use 25 of them and you just leave the five out and your family can eat the rest. And then here I have two eight ounce packages of cream cheese. And as you can see, I don't use Philadelphia. I just use the um, cheap stuff that my grocery store sells here in town. And literally a lot of times you'll notice when it comes to the cheap stuff, once you unpackage it from that box, it looks just like the expensive stuff. So I have two eight ounce packages of cream cheese. They have been set on the counter, so they are softened. Two eight ounce softened packages of cream cheese. I do have a container of Cool Whip. Now I don't, I'm, don't know for sure if I'm gonna use it yet. Uh, I might top it on the top, I don't know, but I've got it out there just in case. I have one fourth um, cup of butter, which is a half a stick of butter. I have a pie pan. I told you I have the food processor. I'm going to grind those cookies with that. And I have one um, jar of my jelly. I'm going to use my strawberry jelly. So that's just a one cup jar. Over here I have my KitchenAid mixer. Um, you guys don't have to use a KitchenAid mixer. You can use your hand beater. Uh, that's, you know, I do recommend something that at least is an electric beater unless you have one of those hand turn ones or whatever. That way you can beat your jelly in there really good. So we're going to go ahead over here to the oven and we're going to preheat our oven to 350 and then we're going to come back over here and we're going to put 25 sandwich cookies in the food processor. All right guys, so I have my 25 sandwich cookies in the food processor. One thing I do want to point out is you will need powdered sugar too. So I don't quite know how much yet. I'm anticipating a half a cup, but I kind of put this in to taste. So you will need that as well. I apologize for forgetting that, but most people, if you're going to bake stuff, you're going to have powdered sugar in your cupboard. So anyways, and then I took my fourth of a cup of butter and I'm going to put it in my little uh, Pyrex uh, Crazy Daisy Corel little dish here and I'm going to put that in the microwave and I'm going to melt it for about 45 seconds. And I do just have a bowl over here because once I crush up my cookies, I'm going to put them in the bowl and, um, you know, melt the, or put the butter in there and mix it around. All right, I got my lid on my food processor and I'm just going to pulse that real quick until those are all blended up. Okay, those are all blended up which I want to point out guys, this Hamilton Beach food processor is amazing. My sister gave it to me. She no longer needed it. I think she used it maybe, I don't know, one time. And this is actually the same exact one as you can get for the, from the Pioneer Woman. Um, this is the same exact design as that one. So it is amazing. So anyways, I just want to go ahead and I want to dump my crushed up cookie crumbs in the bowl here and then I melted that butter in the microwave for 45 seconds. All right guys, so like I said, I melted that butter for 45 seconds. I'm just going to go ahead and drizzle it in there. When I found this cute little Pyrex uh, cup, it actually, or this Corel cup, Crazy Daisy, and it matched my other ones and stacked in there and it had a little spout. I literally almost died because it was a diamond in the rough so anyway so basically I just have a rubber spatula and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to blend that around till it's well mixed I also have just a regular tablespoon just a tablespoon like that I will periodically scrape my spatula okay guys I got this all mixed up and this is what it'll look look like everything's nice and mixed and I just transferred over here to my pie pan Got a little coffee grain there. Um, so this is a nine inch pie pan. I don't know if I said that, but yeah, I'll just go ahead and dump it in there. So I got it transferred over in there. And then this is another reason why you need one of these spoons. And basically I just take it and I come from the center and I just bring it up the side and I just pat it in. Basically we just go around the whole edge and you just pat it in there really nicely. And then once all the edge is done, then you can go ahead and you just fill in the center. 
But yeah, this just assures that you get a nice even around the rim and then whatever is left floating in this center, we can pat it, pat it down in the center. Okay guys, so I pretty much have the, the outside edge of this done. So I just wanna show you, like I'll just go around here and then try to make it look as professional as you can. Um, you know, you don't want it to look too sloppy. Sometimes it just happens. And I'll just go around with my spoon and I'll just kind of pat that top edge down. And then just make sure, like I said, it's even. Make sure that you're happy with the consistency around the whole ring. And then just go ahead in here and then just pat the bottom down. All right, guys, so once you get the bottom all patted down, this is what it'll look like. And then you go ahead and you put the, in the, this in the oven for seven minutes at 350, okay? And we get that out, I will see you back. And then also that spoon that you patted that down with, just keep that off to the side because we pulled out of the oven. We're going to want to give it a once over again, okay? All right, guys, so I got this out of the oven and this spoon, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to give it another, just kind of go over while it's still hot. And I'm going to kind of get all these little things kind of worked out of it. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it in the freezer. So basically just put it in the freezer for, I'd say about five minutes and then we'll start working on our filling. Okay guys, so I have the filling blended up here. I had a little glitch with my camera, but I'll just go through it with you real quick. So this is literally just the two things of softened cream cheese. I just went ahead and I blended that up real quick before I added any of the jelly. And then I, um, so I, I like to blend the cream cheese a little bit ahead of time. And that way, um, if anybody knows that if you work with cream cheese, sometimes if things aren't warm enough on it, or you get to a point where you can't blend anymore, it just won't allow you, you'll get chunks in it. So rule of thumb is always blend that cream cheese first. So I did two things of cream cheese, that whole one cup jar of jelly, and three quarter cup of powdered sugar. And as you can see, it's got a nice consistency. I'm gonna go ahead and taste it here. And yeah, it has a real good flavor. So again, this is a cheesecake. This is a jelly cheesecake. Use any flavor jelly that you want. So we don't want it to be overpowering with strawberry, but yet we want it to have a nice strawberry flavor, flavor but still tastes like cheesecake. So, or like, you know, that cream cheese cheesecake flavor. Like I said, you guys can use any flavor jelly you want in this, uh, but we went ahead with strawberry. So after that, I'm gonna go ahead and get my pie shell out of the freezer. I stuck that in the freezer. And um, so, you know, like in the freezer, I think it's been in there for probably about 15 minutes now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out and we can go ahead and fill the pie shell. All right, guys, so I got it all into my pie shell. It isn't quite set up yet. Now keep in mind, our um, cream, cheese was, cream cheese was softened and it does just kind of kind of do its thing in there. Um, now, the purpose of the powdered sugar was to basically help thicken this, also sweeten it. Now, one jar of jelly is basically like strawberries with one cup of sugar basically mixed in it. But now, you know, two things, blocks of cream cheese, uh, you do need, you did need just that little extra sugar, which was the powdered sugar, and it also acted as that thickener. So powdered sugar, I don't know if any of you guys know this, but if you do, um, just a refresher is powdered sugar is made by taking regular, just granulated sugar and they actually take cornstarch and they go ahead and they grind that together. And that way you get that kind of starchy consistency and it's able, because of the cornstarch, it's able to be milled down super, super fine. So that's also cornstarch, you know, is used as a lot of thickeners and things. So I'm not going to go put any topping on this yet until tomorrow. And basically with this, you know, if I was making this to sell this for somebody, I would put real heavy whipping cream and I would take powdered sugar and some vanilla and I would mix that all together and I would pipe that on the top and then add some fresh strawberries. But since this is just for my family function, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just put Cool Whip on it tomorrow and add some frozen blueberries and that way it kind of gives it that festive red, white, and blue theme. Um, I've got in my blue pie pan, you know, I've kind of got that red in there, reddish pink for my um, pie and then I'll add some white with the blueberries on top. So I'll show you guys it when it's all done tomorrow and I'll actually show you a little bit when it's set up to show you the consistency. Um, that way you guys can kind of see what it looks like. And then we'll go over some other ideas um, as far as like recipes and different things with jelly. So anyways, we'll see you guys back here tomorrow. Okay, so it's the next morning. This has been in the refrigerator 
overnight. Um, basically, I just want to show you the texture then of this pie. Um, so as you can see, it still can kind of move around, but it has set up um, quite a bit to where it's not going to flop around. And basically, I'm just going to take some of this Cool Whip here, and I'm just going to kind of spool that or <laughs> spatula that on the top here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to top it with some blueberries for this. So let me go ahead and get that done. All right, guys, and there you have it. You have a strawberry jelly um, cheesecake pie here. I did top it with some blueberries. I'm going to let those blueberries kind of melt on the top there, and I'll probably take them back off once the juice kind of melts in there, and then I'll kind of swirl that around. Um, I may just leave them on there. It just kind of depends. Uh, a couple things I want to go over with this recipe. So again, um, you know, you can use any jelly for this. If you want your pie a little bit thicker, kind of like what I showed you once I took it out of the fridge, you know, go ahead and add some, um, whip topping to it if you want. If you don't want to add it to the top, add it into the pie. That's no problem. Um, also, you know, like I said, these dollar cookies from the dollar aisle are amazing. Um, they have chocolate, they have vanilla, um, they have lemon. Um, I'm going to make a lemon jelly that would be great for this recipe as well. They even have strawberry, which would have been great. They're just a nice little thing to keep on hand whenever you want to make a pie real quick. Um, also, guys, I just want to point out that you know what this pie filling is also amazing for? Picture making like a white um, cake and frosting it with this and having a nice strawberry cream cheese frosting or cupcakes and piping that frosting on top of the cupcakes. I'm telling you what, there are so many things that you can do with your jelly. You just have to literally, um, you know, use your imagination. Anything you think about with fruit filling or trying to flavor it with fruit um, you know, go ahead and think about using your jelly. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching and be watching for more um, recipes to use with jelly. Please like this video and subscribe to my page. Thanks, guys.